La da 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 da, just finishing my tasks. Uh, okay, there was a dead body in the reactor room. It must be Tash. No, it wasn't me, you idiot! What? Hello learners, welcome to Trick Science, the channel that might seem just like another one, that may seem like it has no valuable information that you haven't heard already. So what if I gave you some proven negotiation tactics that work in the highest of high stakes situations, that you can immediately use to save yourself from being ejected into space, and become a master of the art of letting others have your way. I'm talking about using the highly effective negotiation tactics of the world world's finest hostage and kidnapping negotiators. And what better way to apply their priceless life-saving skills than to a video game? Nowadays, it seems like everyone has been acting a little sus lately, with everyone constantly accusing others of murder. Yes, the game Among Us, which has exploded into popularity as of recently, is a social deduction game that sees up to 10 people being sent into space to complete various tasks. Most of the people are selected to be crewmates, while a couple are selected to be imposters. The crewmates must either complete their tasks or identify the imposters and vote them out of the spaceship, while the imposters must work together to kill the crewmates or sabotage the ship. If any player happens to stumble upon a dead body, they can report it and call a meeting, or just panic and hit an emergency meeting button in the ship. I was so terrified, cheeky pants wouldn't stop staring at me. And this is where the real meat of the game is as players must negotiate with one another to determine who's most likely an imposter and vote them out of the ship. This is also where things get a bit heated between people. So what do you do when entering these high stakes situations either as a crewmate or an imposter? How about we begin with the FBI's most powerful negotiation tactics that you can immediately put to use. One hugely important thing to remember when speaking to anyone on the crew that you want to question, accuse, or vice versa is to remain completely differential. Differential, which by definition is showing or expressing respect. This may seem a little weird at first, and it's super duper important. In fact, it's the constant thing that modern hostage negotiators use throughout the majority of their conversation with a kidnapper or bank robber who may even be threatening to kill a hostage. You see, when talking to someone, if at any point of the conversation you sound accusatory against them or threatening Threatening, there's very little chance of them listening to and more importantly following whatever it is that you have to say. On the other hand, if you sound differential while being genuinely curious as to what the other person has to say first, then they are exceedingly more likely to hear you out. People need to say what's on their mind first before they're ready to hear what you say. And this is really our first big point. Be in a hurry to hear what the other side has to say instead of making your case. Another reason to sound differential is that people have been demonstrated to be at least 31% smarter when they are in a positive state of mind, meaning that they will often make better decisions. So if you first hear your crewmates out, and second, demonstrate that you understand by repeating what they just said, they will be open to hearing and following whatever you saw happen and want to do. You can imagine how important this is for hostage negotiators. If you happen to be an imposter, this rule of respectfully hearing the other side out first and then demonstrating your understanding is far more likely to keep your imposter keister inside of the ship. As again, once the other side feels heard and now unthreatened, they're much more likely to not react aggressively or accusatory when hearing your side of the story. If you have a decent alibi of why it wasn't you that off that other teammate, your respectful stance could cause them to actually go with your side of the story and at the very least not mark whatever you say as outright lies. As a bonus tip, it also helps that when it's finally your turn to speak and ask questions, that you really make an effort to up inflect on the end of your questions and statements to urge them to keep talking. And this brings us into our second tactic. Whenever you do ask a question of someone else or open with a question to get someone else to speak first, it's way better to ask how and what questions instead of why. This is because how 
on what questions get someone to think critically about whatever they were asked, while not causing them to become defensive and reactive. Why, on the other hand, has literally been shown across all human cultures to cause immediate defensiveness. So instead of asking, why were you running out of medical where the body was found, you can simply ask, what were you doing in medical? This will force them to think critically and tell you their best alibi, which may or may not match up with everyone else's story. So everyone gets to hear what happened, tell their own story, and then, based upon the evidence, decide the best course of action. And best of all, it happens without anyone becoming defensive and pointing fingers at you. <sighs> Gosh, it's really hard to understand what the heck is going on and who to vote out when it's a constant yell fest, which often results in either no vote happening or a crewmate being voted out and gives the killers more time to kill. Asking how and what questions can actually suss out who's an imposter and who's not, while not making you seem like a threat. Likewise, if you are an imposter, you get a chance to tell your alibi to keep you alive, while at the same time keeping finger pointers off of you because you're not instigating anyone. Just have a decent alibi, or else. But if you're worried of what to do as an imposter or crewmate when accused, then here's this third doozy. According to Chris Voss, former chief hostage and kidnapping the negotiator for the FBI, where a lot of this information is coming from, a great way to say no is to say the words, how am I supposed to do that? Or in this case, how was I supposed to do that? What this does is it gets the accuser to back off as you've now asked a how question to get them to think critically, while at the same time telling them no, it wasn't me without making them defensive. Often this will grind their accusations to a halt, or more rarely, they will think critically and come back telling you how you did take out that person. What's important to know in these situations, when the heat is on, is that you can repeat this phrase multiple times. So if someone accuses you of having killed Jack in the reactor room, you can say, I was over in the lower engine room. How was I supposed to do that? If they do come back at you, you can just keep going. Uh, you're the only one who was up in that area. It has to be you. It sounds like I could have killed them. I did head over to electrical with Mike when Jack was still alive. How was I supposed to do that? After a few times, there's a good chance they will stop, but if they don't, you at least haven't instigated anyone else against you and painted a larger target on your back. Cause denial actually serves the opposite purpose of, how was I supposed to do that? And makes people think that you are whatever you're denying. I'm not an imposter. I'm not. Yeah, you're totally an imposter. <laughs> I was an electrical. How was I supposed to do that? Uh, I don't know. And this brings us to a fourth, and I dare say hugely useful FBI tactic that I actually snuck in called labeling. This tactic really makes the other side feel heard and opens them up to having your way, simply by getting rid of their fears. Labeling is simply calling out whatever a person feels or is afraid of. It actually works better than questions in getting people to talk. It involves using the words it seems like, sounds like, or feels feels like. This is a great first response to whatever anyone just said, as it lets someone who just spoke before you know that you understood what they said, and thus lowers their guard. With their guard lowered, you can then come in with whatever further questions or course of action you want to take. More importantly, if you're ever accused of killing someone, for example in the med bay, before you slap them with a good old, how was I supposed to do that, you can first say, seems like it could have been me. Seems like I could have just been faking tasks. While this tactic seems insane and frankly sounds like it's suicide, it is very effective at stopping someone. Again, because you're calling out everyone's fears, literally throwing them out of the room and off of you. In fact, this tactic of throwing away fear works so well, and especially for hostage negotiators, because the number one driver of human behavior is fear, or fear of loss. With you outright labeling everyone's fear of you being an imposter, their fear of losing their life can be quickly quelled and they become far more likely to hear you out and follow what you say. It also helps to keep your words short when using labels to make your point quick and easy to understand. Do you see the pattern of these tactics getting others to not see you as a threat so that they can have your way? The last tactic that removes you as a threat should you be branded as one goes with the really interesting neuroscience topic of mirror 
mirror neurons. Or more specifically, neurons in our brains that subconsciously cause us to mirror the behavior of others. This is why being differential and hearing the smile in your voice gets others to be more positive. It also allows you to use a tactic of slowing the other person down by speaking really slow. Or what is called the late night FM DJ voice. Whenever someone is giving you pushback and making threats, if you want to hit them with no statements like, how was I supposed to do that? Speaking slowly and ending with a down inflection gets a person via mirror neurons to slow down and stop their current behavior. As a side note, what's the difference between upward and downward inflections? Well, when used, upward inflections urge someone to go on, while downward inflections let them know they can stop talking. It sounds like you're angry? It sounds like you're angry. Hear the difference? So if you can utilize even some of these field tested tactics on your next session of Among Us, you stand a much greater chance of success. These tactics can't guarantee your absolute victory, but they can guarantee your highest chance of victory. And statistically, 20% of the time, people will be too stubborn to hear you out. So there's that wrench. And remember, with great power comes great responsibility of winning. Around 80%. Anyways, that's just some science. Trick science. See you learners on the flip side.